I'm Dave from Thomas Jacks and today we've got two pocket sized Axions to show you. They've both got 30mm lenses but the difference is in the sensor. This one is the XQ30 Pro so it's got a 384 by 288 17 micron pixel sensor and this one this is the new Axion XG30 Compact and that's got a 640 by 480 12 micron sensor. With the only difference being the sensor, there are five things that you'll notice if you own one of these, and I'm gonna show you. It won't surprise you to know that having different sensors in these mean that they come at a different price ticket because the sensor is both the most important and the most expensive component in any thermal device. Now, Pulsar only use French-made Linred sensors, so you know they're top quality. That's why the XQ30 Pro that comes in at £1,069, whereas the XG30 Compact, that's £1,399 for the bigger sensor. Let's see what difference that actually makes. And here's what we can see with both of these compact Axion thermal spotters. The XQ30 Pros on the left and the XG30 Compact on the right. As soon as we turn on our thermal spotters, we've discovered a rabbit 70 metres away on both devices with ease and we can identify pheasants at 90 metres further down the track from their movement, shape and size. Both devices have identical controls, which includes recording audio with the video, which I'll stick on to demonstrate what that sounds like. At this point the weather's worth a mention, because thermal devices deal with temperature and that's affected by moisture. It's currently dry, but humidity is at 79% and rain is imminent, so if you want to see how the accents perform in the rain, keep watching. The keen-eyed may have spotted that squirrel, top right, which helpfully answers a common question. Can thermal see animals and birds in trees? So yeah, both of these will do that. What we're detecting of the squirrel is the bits in the shadows between the leaves and the branches that you definitely wouldn't spot with binoculars alone. Both of these axions focus in the same way. I'll just check the XG30 with a twist of the lens. And the XQ30 Pro so we can assess what's arguably the most crucial point of difference, image resolution. It's the level of detail given by the number of pixels in the sensor, but in real terms that capability equates to detecting animals quicker and further away, because they've just more definition, so of course it also means more reliable identification as well as more information on the environment that surrounds the animal. At this range, and in these relatively normal conditions, the XG sensor with more pixels is more defined, although both devices have detected animals and helped us identify what we're seeing. But image quality is so important, we'll come back to this later in the video. For now, let's go on with number two, field of view, or how wide the image is. Bigger is better, providing a broader peripheral view, which is what you get with the XG. What is nice, they've also reformatted that XG display, as well as the recorded video, to a widescreen view. In practice, the wider field of view is more efficient when you're scanning around searching for animals and birds. And the XG's 14.6 degrees is around 10% better than the XQ's 13.3. So that's 10% more helpful. Now, returning to resolution because we've spotted what looks like a deer over 400 metres away. The XQ30 image is noticeably softer, with fewer but larger pixels. Whereas the XG30 is sharper in the foreground, in the rows of trees and for the deer itself. So while both have detected the deer, the XG is clearer at identifying it at this larger range, which leads us nicely onto difference number three, zoom capability. We're talking digital zoom with all of these devices that magnifies just a portion of the sensor. Both devices allow you to do that in increments or doubling steps. There's inevitably increasing pixelation the more you do it, but it can be a real help to identify animals. The advantage you get from more pixels in the XG sensor is there's comparatively less pixelation and it'll zoom from 2 to 16 times, whereas the XQ sensor starts at 2 times and zooms to 8 times. And with that battery warning appearing on the XG because power's dropped to 10%, we'll move on to the next point of difference. And that's battery life. The good news is both devices last ages on a full charge. The XG30 is up to 7 hours and the XQ30 Pro up to 11 hours. The other good news is batteries are easy to swap, which if you're like me and occasionally forget to charge the device before you go out, you just need to ensure you're carrying a spare or a power bank. 
As you may have guessed, the reason for the difference in battery life is again down to the different sensors. Now that's rain you can hear. And that will helpfully demonstrate our final factor, NETD. It stands for Net Equivalent Temperature Difference. And it's a sensor's ability to show the minute temperature differences that give form and shape to trees and animals. Now, rain, mist or fog, snow, humidity, they all put a barrier of cold water droplets between us and what we're looking at. And the worse the rain is, the more valuable a low NETD becomes. Thankfully, the rain's not too bad at the moment. Certainly not bad enough to need to switch to a higher sensor amplification. But it's noticeable that the larger pixels in the XQ30 are better at retaining their heat sensing capability versus the smaller pixels in the XG30. So despite having fewer pixels, the XQ30 is now almost as good as the XG30 at finding the brood of pheasants, sheltering in the far corner of the neighbouring field 370 metres away. It's not a big change, but it would be more noticeable if the weather were to worsen. Before we conclude, the weather has brightened, so for bird watchers, ecologists or anyone looking for smaller animals, just want to come back to that primary point of difference, and that's resolution. Small birds in trees 50 metres away, clearer and more likely to be detected on the XG30. A larger bird at 100 metres away. The task with thermal in bird spotting is mainly about detection, often in trees but typically at lesser ranges than this but it's helpful to give you as many examples as possible as to what these devices can do in different conditions. So, that's the Axion XQ30 Pro and the Pulsar Axion XG30 Compact. They look the same, until you look through them. To find out more or locate your local stockist, visit tj-focus.co.uk or subscribe for more videos like this. I'm David Thomas-Jacks. Thanks for watching.